four topics today. Megan Markle, Consul, Queen Consort Camilla, Lindsey Graham, U.S. politics, subpoena uh, dodging. And while we're there, let's talk about Mark Meadows, also subpoena dodging, U.S. politics. He was uh, chief of staff for Trump. Uh, so I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark. This is my journey through tarot. Come on. So yeah, this will just be a grab bag of issues, and uh, so we're going to go right down the list. Uh, we're going to do two uh, royals, two U.S. politics, um, uh, Duchess of Sussex uh, Markle, Meghan Markle, uh, Queen Consort Camilla, a senator from uh, South is it South Carolina, I believe it is, uh, Lindsey Graham, who uh, became uh, Trump's poodle, and then uh, Mark Meadows, who was just Trump's lost. Uh, holding his head, uh, chief of staff, and now both of those two are, are dodging subpoenas left and right. So let's uh, do a read on all of that. So this is what we've got today. It's kind of a grab bag, but um, it seems like Meghan Markle's media empire, if you want to call it that, isn't going the way that they hoped it would. Are they having to pull back um, because Harry's trying to be kinder or more delicate with Charles. Um, is it going to be a success after all? And then Queen Camilla, Queen Consort uh, Camilla. Is she what the doctor ordered? Is she what Charles needs? And is she trying to, to, to find ways to, to put this back together? I want to read on Lindsey Graham who was a senator from um, South Carolina, if I'm not mistaken. It's either north of South Carolina, I believe it's South Carolina, uh, who was for so many years um, the sidekick of John uh, McCain. When he died and Trump insulted him, Lindsey Graham just switched sides. I mean, ran over to Trump and became, many people are calling him Trump's poodle. And now I think he's he's lied so much and he's become so involved in all of that dishonesty, he doesn't seem to have an out. If any of them go and testify and tell the truth, they can't. And so then that brings us to Mark Meadows, who is Trump's chief of staff. So all of it's very complicated and sorted, and um, I'm not even sure what questions I'm going to ask around that, but uh, we'll see. But uh, we want to get in on uh, Meghan Markle and uh, Camilla and, and find out what... What can we find out? But before we do any of that, of course, let's just take a minute. Let's take a moment uh, for meditation. Okay. Uh, these people's lives are so complicated, and I don't know. Here's uh, how I feel about Meghan Markle. Okay, she had nothing. She created a, uh, a, a fame for herself, and if she had never met Harry, um, you know, she would have been a wealthy uh, woman, uh, you know, working somehow into her old age. And, and and she had a, a history of doing good things, supporting decent causes. So for Meghan Markle, does she regret marrying into the royal family? Three cards. One, two, three. Does she regret marrying into the royal family? I mean, if you're in love, it's, it's hard to regret that. So maybe that's what I should have asked first. But it was like, does she regret marrying into the royal family? Well, look at this. An ace of wands. You know, wands are actions, plans, forward movement. And the ace of wands is a great big, you know, offer of let's get this thing moving ahead. 
Does she regret? Then we got the King of Cups, King of Compassion. You know, I think this is Charles right now. I think Charles is bringing it to the table with this couple in as restrained a way as he can, probably. And then the last card for this question, does she regret? Well, holding on to your value. And that's where she's left, isn't she? If she hadn't married into the royal family, she had value. Listen, if I had $6 million, my worth was $6 million, which it certainly is not, uh, I wouldn't be worried about uh, doing anything else except, you know, living my life. But now she's at the point where everything that they make, their lifestyle, just to be who they are, okay, to protect themselves, it takes a lot of money. So just holding on to their value, I think that's where she's left right now. Does she regret um, marrying into the royal family? Well, it looks like she starts out with a plan. I don't know when the plan started. Did she did she um, conspire to marry Harry? Some people think that's the case. Did the uh, thing happen and, uh, and, then, and then they liked each other and then that became the plan to find a way to move forward? Who knows? Could be either one of those. But it all started with a great big plan to get this thing going. And right now it's centered on, just like in the center position here, on King Charles, compassionate king. And then the end result of this is having to hold on to her value. So for Meghan Markle, I think that's a little bit of the story there. But let's see. Let's ask with one card. One card. Does she love Harry? Does she love Harry? One card. Look at that. And were answered with the lovers. You couldn't ask for for a better outcome than that. Does does she love Harry? Yes. One card. One card. Only one chance to answer that question, and you see how it came out. So that, with that, you can do almost anything. Is Charles working to get them? Back into the family, not representing the family, but back into the family. Let's try one card again. Well, look at that generational value. He realizes that there's a question of generational value uh, here with his Ten of Pentacles. That's what that's what this card is about. Generational family value. That's what's important. Love it. Next thing I want to ask about Meghan Markle is will Meghan Markle and the royal family be restored to some sort of a, a happiness that the rest of us will be able to notice? That's what I want to know. A lot of you don't like her. Uh, let's do four cards. One, two, three, and four. Will she be restored to that family in some sort of a meaningful way that we'll, we'll see? First card. Well, victory. Okay. So this uh, actions, plans, the plans, the actions that they're taking will be victorious. Next card. Queen of Cups. I'm going to say this is Camilla. I'm going to say Camilla is playing some sort of a part in pulling this together. I think she recognizes the legacy of her husband. Hinges on a little bit of this. The next card is wanting things the way they were. This is the Six of Cups, which is a compassionate card. This is, harkens back to the past. Wanting things the way that they were. Final card. Will she be restored to the royal family? Page of Swords. So the weakest member of the, of, the, of the royal court, truth, justice, rules and law. This message is coming. Um, so yeah, I think that this is on the way. I ask if she will be restored to the royal family in some sort of a meaningful way that we'll notice. And the first card we get is the victory card, the Six of um, Wands. The next card up for that question is the Queen of Cups, and I've got to think this is Camilla behind the scenes working to get this worked out. I, the next card is the uh, hearkening back to the past in a compassionate, emotional way, wishing things were the way they were. And, uh, and then the final outcome for that is this Page of Swords, a messenger, the beginnings of some truth, justice, rules, and law. So I think it's in the cards 
that things will get worked out. But now let's jump right to uh, Queen Camilla. Queen Camilla. <sighs> I don't think there's any doubt that she loves Charles. I don't. I think that's always been there. I think she made terrible judgments and and but with what she knew at the time with the way things were going at the time I think she did what she but she should never have come between a man and his wife never ever ever one of the two of them her or Charles should have had the wherewithal to say no we can't do this Diana was completely not at fault in any of this. And she was completely the victim. And the people who 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 perpetrated the problem, Charles and Camilla, they're living their life out. So Camilla, is she working to try to bring uh, uh, Harry back into the fold with her husband? Let's do one card. Look at this, balancing things out. Trying to find a balance of value. Very nice. Queen Camilla. I want to know if she will be successful in finding a way to pull this family back together. Will Queen Camilla be the one who's successful in bringing that family back together? Will be ironic if she is. Let's do... Uh, Let's do another four cards. Queen Camilla, haven't been the, you know, if you broke it, then you should be the one that fixes it. Queen Camilla, will she bring it? Well, having to walk away from something of deep emotional value to you, having to leave it all behind and go off in another direction. Practicing your craft, finding a way to get that value, to get that worth all lined up in a perfect way. The high priestess coming at something with all the knowledge, all the wherewithal to make a thing done. And the king of cups, Charles, comes back into the picture to show us that he is a compassionate king. I think that this is absolutely, that she absolutely will be successful. She has to turn her back on, on, on some very important emotional issues that we may never know what they actually are. But she has to turn away from that to practice her craft, to work on this value, to get it down perfect. She will become the one with the knowledge to get it done. And Charles will be restored as the compassionate king. That's nice. Uh, now let's jump to the U.S. Let's go to U.S. politics and talk about Senator Lindsey Graham. So you may remember he was John McCain's sidekick for years. They were finger and nail. They were uh, peas in a pod. And um, so respected and so much a part of each other's uh, political lives and even um, familially involved. Although Lindsey Graham's family life is a mystery. He never married. His parents died. I forget why. But he ended up being the one to raise at least one of his siblings. I don't know if there were more than one. But he ended up being the young man who went in the army and ended up raising his brother and maybe brother and sisters. I forget the, the number of kids that there were. It was just two of them or more than that. And he did a good job at that. He was noble. But even good people do bad things. So Lindsey Graham, is he ever going to repair his reputation? Will Lindsey Graham ever be able to repair his, uh, his reputation? One card. Well, again, generational value. 
So this is the 10 of coins. I love when the cards repeat because out of all these cards, it's just a miracle that a repeat card would come back up. And it tells me that uh, wherever these messages come from, someone, something has said, oh, I know how he's going to read that card. And so I can use that to help make this thought a complete uh, message. So will Lindsey Graham uh, be restored and uh, generational value is the answer to that. You have to admit, he's going to go down in the history books as someone of importance in American politics. Uh, that brings value. Um, I have to say, I give the cards a positive spin unless they're obviously not positive. So it looks like he may be somehow able to restore his generational value. I don't know. Let's ask the more specific question. Will he testify in Georgia? Will Lindsey Graham testify in Georgia. Will Lindsey Graham testify in Georgia? He's fighting it. Um, he's taken all the way to Supreme Court. He's got one of the Supreme Court justices on his side. Will he testify in that Georgia subpoena situation? Let's do three cards. One, two, and three. Yeah. Will he testify in in that Georgia subpoena situation. Working together to build something for public display. There's some sort of a negotiation. There's some sort of a collaboration to get this thing worked out. <coughs> Have I done enough? And I think it's obvious that he hasn't done enough, but he's looking at that harvest and wondering what more he can do but he's trying to save himself. And I think there comes a point, it's like running into a fire to save someone that you love. There comes a point when you have to just put your own self aside and run in and rescue whatever needs to be rescued. And um, so he recognizes that there's a huge question as to whether he's done enough. Well, this is, again, a familial, emotional value. It looks like somehow in the end, he will. And he has to know that he's going to lose these court battles and that, and that this is the inevitable end. So will he testify in Georgia? Working together to put something together for pub of value for public display. Wondering what can, more could I have done or can I do and uh, it ends up with a familial emotional uh, value. He'll testify. Now, Mark Meadows. This is an interesting fellow. He <clears throat> is not in stature, but in a lot of ways, a small man that figured out how to um, make money, get notoriety in politics, and somehow be the kid that is in the back of the class, but gets gold stars for knowing a lot somehow. You know, so Mark Meadows is, let's just ask the question, is he a good person? Mark Meadows, one card. Nightmares. Nightmares. He can't find a way to work around the truth, justice, rules, and law. Okay, will Mark Meadows testify in those uh, uh, as a response to those subpoenas? That's what I want to know. Mark Meadows, is he going to testify? Let's do three cards. No, let's do four cards. Mark Meadows, is he going to testify? Another one who's lost his way. Oh. Well, it's the end of the road for him. Truth, justice, rules, and law do him in in the end. Next card. Oh, repeats. Look at that. Out of all those cards, it comes back up again. It is a nightmare for him. Truth, justice, rules, and law. The King of Cups. So there's a compassionate king here. Somehow. And the last card is an, uh, an offer of emotional value. 
I wonder if somehow Joe Biden doesn't come to his rescue, either in, in giving him counsel personally, because Joe Biden's strength is to walk up beside you, put his arm around your shoulder and say, you know you have to do what's right. And then that brings about some sort of a great big emotional reward. He'll testify. He'll be convinced of it. And even though it is his ruination, there will be some sort of a cleansing emotional component to it for him. It's interesting on this cup, there's like an upside WM for Mark Meadows. So that was my quick little read for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Well, that was a complicated bunch of uh, readings there. And I hope, uh, you know, you agreed with what I had to say. And if you didn't agree with what I had to say, tell me in the comments and let me know what you thought about the cards and tell me what you'd like me to read on and I'll read on that. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. Okay, so this is the newest deck I've got. This is the Radiant Wise Spirit Tarot. Um, it's just another take on uh, from Los Scarbio on um, the um, the classic Rider Waite Tarot. But uh, apparently this person, Wise, has had their input into it. And uh, the, what I love about it, first of all, it's got a great container. I always feel like what I think of when I open these containers is if I got this as a gift, what would I think about it? And I think, well, this is very nice. When you get into the box... I mean, it gives you a hint right from the beginning what you're going to see. It's a close-up of the cards in kind of rich color with kind of a, a tinged uh, overtone to kind of give it an antique look, in my opinion. Anyway, the cards themselves, I'll go over, but I want to tell you first about the instruction booklet. And, you know, it's a typical instruction booklet that you get with any of these decks. It's in a few different languages, and it just gives you some basic uh, uh, meanings of how to divide the cards. But what's good about it and is that it gives you a really terrific uh, synopsis of uh, how uh, this uh, uh, rider weight uh, system was developed and when and by who. It talks a, a little enough about author weight and Pamela Coleman Smith, who were the creators of this and the Kabbalistic theory and history of all of that. Um, it, is, it gives you a real quick mention about the Golden Dawn, which is very significant to the development of these cards. And then it gives you a really great little section about, about how to read the tarot and storytelling through the cards. So I like the little book. I mean, it's nothing earth shattering. It's not information that most people don't know, but it is uh, interesting. Now, the cards themselves, they got a cool back. They're kind of shiny. And um, you're going to see that kind of what they are is like they've kind of made a close up of the typical tarot uh, images and then colored them in very vibrantly and then oversprayed the whole thing with sort of an antique kind of a, a feel. So they're great for me. I've got a few uh, vision problems and so in that they're close up, but they're still vibrant with color. And I think these are going to look great on the camera. Uh, I like to uh, spread the cards out like this for a couple of reasons. One is it's a good way to show you uh, more than a couple of cards that you get to see in a typical tarot drawing. And that's something that I always wanted to see. I wanted to know more about what the cards I was looking at before I was making the videos. And number two, it's a good way to um, shuffle the cards up without damaging them too much. And if you're reading for someone else, then there's a third uh, benefit, is that you can let someone else do this kind of spread around if they're not comfortable with making a shuffle. or, or And then you kind of get their energy into the cards. So this is the uh, Radiant Wise Spirit Tarot. And I just like them a lot. So this will be my newest deck. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now. One, two, three. You really make a big difference. Thank you.